12. Okay. Hey, live, 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 live. We're on the air. Hey, how you guys doing? It's Bruce here, traveling with Bruce. How's it going today, everybody? Welcome to the show. Uh, June 20th, Wednesday, hump day, June 20th, 2018. It's Wednesday. Welcome to traveling with Bruce. How are you guys doing today? Uh, I just got, I was just looking at my, my messages and, uh, holy moly, Thomas, what, this is awesome news. Uh, Thomas just sent me a quick message. Guess he's bought himself a dehumidifier <laughs> on Amazon and used the affiliate link I've got. And, um, I can't wait till tomorrow morning when I wake up to see if this goes through. I won't know until tomorrow whether it clicked through. I'm praying it hit. Oh, wow. That is fantastic. I'll let you know what the affiliate is on that. $672 dehumidifier. Uh, I don't know what the commission is on that. Is it 2%, 3, 5, 8, 10? I, I don't know. So this could be big. <laughs> That's fantastic. I want anyone, every one of you guys out there to buy a $672 item on Amazon today on my link, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas, in advance. I <laughs> just can't believe it. That's awesome. Uh, I was all excited about telling you that um, that I had five items go through the other day. Uh, I think I made about four dollars yesterday on affiliate stuff, some pet food and stuff. I don't care what it is; I'm so happy. Uh, but then I noticed uh, last night uh, five items got ordered yesterday. Uh, I don't know if it's one person or two or three, but it came up to like two hundred and twenty bucks worth of stuff. That's a new record up up until what Thomas just told me. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I just, I'm just overwhelmed and I'm so grateful uh, to the, those of you who are, are taking the time, going through the trouble of trying to help this guy out with his channel by going to my Amazon link, which is right below here. And if you're a shopper on Amazon link, just hit that thing. It'll take you right to the homepage and then you can buy whatever you want. Uh, costs you no different. And a finder's fee comes to me based on what it is. And uh, I don't screw it up because I don't ship it. I don't pick it. I don't send it. I don't collect the money. Amazon does everything for you guys. They got that return policy. They take care of you. And uh, you get your item. And uh, I get a royalty on everything you buy as, as a commission. This is just a beautiful deal. It's kind of like this right here. Uh, with the help of one of my greatest uh, viewers and subscribers, been able to make these logos up and l load them up to Redbubble, the Redbubble online store I've got. And you can get yourself a coffee mug or a shirt or a travel mug or a sticker or a tote bag, a wall clock, uh, anything you want that's available. And uh, I can't screw that up either. Uh, they make it, they ship it, they collect the money, they handle returns, they take care of you guys. And I just get people selling, telling me, I got the shirts. They're fantastic. I got the coffee mugs. They're great. And they're sending me photos and posting them on the YouTube Traveling with Bruce home, uh, uh, group page. Head over to you. Uh, sorry, not YouTube. The Facebook. The fa I'm, there's so many social media things. I can't keep up with it. Facebook group page called Traveling with Bruce. Head on over there anytime you want. Check out the Traveling with Bruce Facebook group page. Share your photos of your favorite trips. Take photos of anything you get from Traveling with Bruce and show everybody what it looks like. And let me know, let us all know, how does it look? Is it all right? Is it good quality? Are you happy with the finish? Are you happy with the, the experience? Uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled. I'm just, I'm just over the moon with, uh, with Redbubble and Amazon uh, because these two entities are taking care of you guys just right. And uh uh, I, I'm getting a royalty from all that, and it helps uh, just keep funding this channel and this guy's existence because this, this is my full-time job. <laughs> it's all I do. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm constantly thinking of ways to how else can I monetize this thing because YouTube isn't helping me. I'm not getting a dime from YouTube. Still waiting for an answer. And um, the end of June is 10 days away. Uh, that is the latest deadline that YouTube has said to all of us. Well, that's when we should be through all of our review process for our uh, monetization. They said that at the end of April, and they said it would be one week after Feb 20. <laughs> so I haven't been paid since Feb 20 from any advertising whatsoever. Not that there is any advertising on this show. There isn't any, uh, but they aren't monetizing me yet. And I, I don't know, am I going to be, you know, immediately re-monetized on July 1? Uh, am I under a review process from then on? I, I don't, I don't know. 
it's just it's just it's the mystery of life baby it's the mystery of life so thanking you is what i do every day i try not to forget it i am so grateful for some of you have been so unbelievably supportive uh, above, above and beyond the call and a whole bunch of you have just been you know taking pity on this poor guy and helping him out and i appreciate all contributions to this cause including paypal donations and auntie jane in new zealand i think she's on her way today to the gold coast in australia she sent me 50 New Zealand dollars last night. <laughs> I got the message at around midnight. <laughs> Doolit goes my phone and I'm looking at my email going, what? 50 New Zealand dollars? Oh my gosh, she sent me some money on PayPal. Uh, God bless her for that. Thank you so much, Andy Jane. If you're watching this rerun later, thank you again for all your support. It is fantastic. I can't meet the, can't wait to meet her. Can't meet can't wait to meet a lot of you guys because uh, so many of you folks have been uh, so helpful to me and i cannot wait till the day i meet you all on a meet and greet and uh, on a cruise or two or three so that day is coming i swear i promise it is so there you go uh fantastic uh developments there the channel is growing we were at 2270 subscribers yesterday we're now 2274 another four have come in a lot of messages have come in, and I've got an update for you guys. Uh, I know some of you are following the story, some of you more closely than others. The story is about the uh, Carnival Magic. Uh, the Carnival Magic cruise ship um, uh, apparently has, uh, uh, has had technical issues. And uh, just pardon me one second. I'm just going to double check. We don't have any, uh, any trolls. Uh, we've had some issues regarding the... Uh, um, we've had some issues regarding the uh, propulsion system, the engine for the Carnival Magic. Uh, it was supposed to leave last Saturday at. Um, it was supposed to leave last Saturday at uh, uh, out of uh, Port Canaveral, and uh, normally the ship would 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 uh, load passengers starting around 10, 30, 11 in the morning, and then would leave around four or five in the afternoon. Well, they didn't start putting passengers on board till three o'clock last Saturday, and I bet you they didn't get out of port till seven or eight o'clock at night. It would had to have been that long. Anyway, uh, they missed, or they said they were going to miss uh, St. Thomas, and that they were that they were not going at full speed. Well, lo and behold, yesterday I got a message. I think it was uh, Randy Lucas, and Randy sent to me, uh, telling me, uh, no, he got a he got a uh, he got a, a message from someone who he knows is on the ship, saying that they got to the ship uh, to the to St. Thomas, but late. They got there at eleven thirty in the morning instead of uh, six in the morning, and they were leaving at seven at night in the evening. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with that uh, schedule they're on right now. They're on. They're supposed to be back in uh, Port Canaveral this Saturday. That's uh, you know three days from now. Well, th today I got a message, uh, or last night and today I got a couple of updates. Updates that uh, Carnival has stated in a letter to passengers on this cruise coming up. The next one, they're not going to go to St. Thomas. <laughs> they're missing it again, and there's going to be a fifty dollar credit per person given uh, automatic uh, uh, for compensation plus no port charges, no fees for that segment of the tour um now will they make it or not i don't know if they're even going to try uh i can't find anything official from carnival anywhere but uh, this is coming from people who know people or those who are planning to go on that cruise are giving me info and i really appreciate it very much any of you have any information on that ship uh, whether it's you know somebody's on it now or someone's going on it next week or the week after by all means let me know i'll broadcast it out to everybody else and we'll try and stay on top of the story so that that's the latest on the uh on the uh, Carnival Magic, it's a kind of continuing saga here. It, it, I don't know what the issue is. Is you know, at first I thought maybe they had a, a you know mechanical issue, and there's a part required, and and, and you think that uh, within a week they figure it out. Well, maybe the part that they need has to be manufactured on a custom basis. Maybe it's one of these kinds of parts that you don't stock. You only replace the part when it you know has to be replaced, and you literally remanufacture it from scratch from the manufacturer of the engine or generator or whatever it is is, is faulty and uh, maybe that's what's going on and maybe that's this cruise might be a several weeks limping along here at uh, reduced power until the part is manufactured delivered installed and so no idea what's going on uh, the other thought could be this ship might go in for an emergency dry dock sooner rather than later but in the meantime they're going to honor their you know their first you know, four or five cruises here, and then they'll they'll get it in. I don't know if they can get it in the dry dock anywhere. There may not be any room in dry dock for the ship to go into. So there's all this stuff. I, I don't know what what to make of it. That's part of the trials and tribulations of the uh, cruise business. Now, if you're a, a passenger on the ship, let's say you've got a cruise in three weeks, four weeks, 
and they cancel. You know, it can happen. They could cancel. I guarantee you, they will. Uh, they will try to make it right. The Cardinal people uh, lately, uh, whenever there's been an issue, they've been on the ball trying to repair. You know, any kind of damage if it's all possible with with their relations with their clients. The first thing they'll do is um, they will offer you a full refund right off the get go. That's the first thing you're going to get. Uh, the second thing you would get is uh, any and all charges an airline would charge you for canceling your flight, like literally completely cancel your holiday. They will make good on all that. Then they would probably turn around and offer you either a free cruise or a 50% off any cruise you want in the future for the next you know year or two or three, whatever. Um, they might offer you more than the cruise. They might offer you 110%, 120% of the cash that you put down on that cruise, and they'll offer you a discount. They will make it right any way they can. On the other hand, they may say to you, Look, uh, you're supposed to go on a cruise in four weeks, and uh, you know it's canceled. We're really sorry about that. It's leaving Port Canaveral. Uh, what we can do for you, we'll give you options. Uh, door number one, door number two, or door number three. Well, door number one might be the refund deal I was just mentioning. Door number two might be a, a future cruise credit of some kind. Door number three might be, how about another cruise? How would you like to go instead on a cruise to, uh, let's say, from Fort Lauderdale on the such and such ship? Uh, for a week in these ports, right? So it's another entire cruise. And um, we'll either give you the same kind of cabin you got now, or how about we upgrade you? We'll take you from a you know, a standard balcony to a premium balcony if we have one available. They might cut deals. I don't know. It's a it's upwards of 3,000 people that could be offered this deal. The question is how many would take up the offer? Um, they may not be able to accommodate 3,000 people within the next four weeks to make it work. Now, they might say, look, um, We'll offer you uh, this cruise, like another cruise instead, for the next, say, three months. Pick pick a any of these ships in the next week for the next three months, anywhere in there, and uh, we'll take care of you, and we'll help book your flights and all that kind of stuff. But again, uh, might the simplest thing for Carnival to do would be just to do a full-blown refund with a big, fat credit on another cruise with an apology letter. Um, you know, and and try to you know hope that uh, most of the three thousand will will do something else, but. We'll find out. I don't know what the future holds for the uh, nor the Carnival Magic. How bad the issue is? It's obviously sailing. It's still sailing. Um, they want to sail it now instead of a four itinerary cruise. They want to make it a three itinerary cruise. So it's got power. Um, food is apparently being served all right. The the air conditioning works. Uh, all the lighting is lighting and working. So you know the rest of the ship is good. It's just that the the propulsion issue. There's obviously something there. We'll find out uh, eventually, probably, eventually, I hope, we'll find out what the real, Ill, real issue was. Anyway, there you go. Uh, again, thanks for joining me today. 37 viewers are here now. Uh, I'm showing we got 12 thumbs ups, three thumbs downs. Uh, thank you for the thumbs ups. Uh, not so crazy about the thumbs downs, but, you know, if you don't like the show, give me a thumbs down. I get it. I, I understand it. Uh, tell me how I can do better. I'll try and do better. Um, Let's say hi to everybody and let's get on to the topic at hand, which is never ever fly to your cruise ship on the day of debarkation. Uh, I kind of mentioned that before, but I got to do it. I got a story for you guys. Today, Peter Heckham has signed in and said hi to me, uh, saying hi, Bruce and everyone. 81 degrees in New York. He's in New York City uh, from Florida up to New York, uh, Tarpon Springs, Florida. He's in New York City. Uh, heading north to spend a few days in the Adirondack Mountains. going to be nice up there. Listen to Traveling with Bruce as we go and joining in when possible. Good trivia show last night, Bruce. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. We had fun with that. Thomas Henry, uh, uh, hi, Peter. Missed you this week. Uh, the cot was empty, not even a troll. <laughs> well, Thomas Henry says, 81 Fahrenheit in Richmond now with some thunder. And then, uh, P.S., I was listening to last night's trivia while between injections this morning. Oh, man. Great show, Bruce. I really expected uh, Penn State at, at State College to be in the list. And I was asking one of those questions, the trivia questions. Tell me the cities in the United States with the most university students. What cities have the most university students? And uh, Penn State didn't, didn't make the list. Uh, they must be in the high 40s, 40,000s. But uh, New York with 355,000 was number one. And uh, I think, was it City College, Texas College, something like that? was the 22nd largest. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of cities in the meantime. We had a fun with it. We had a lot of fun with that. Wes Morrison, 81 here in New Braunfels with scattered showers. And Jordan, hey, Bruce. And all, it's 23 Celsius uh, uh, in Brisbane. Brr, freezing. Great trivia yesterday. <laughs> 23 Celsius. It's like 75. It's really ice cold in Brisbane right now at 75 degrees. Oh, the hardship, my dear. Uh, Anne, I'm glad you enjoyed that very much. Uh, she's saying hi to Peter and Wes. 
And Wes, thanks again for coming back as always. Thomas, uh, Henry, I never thought of 23 Celsius as cold. Must be very thin skin on end. <laughs> You know, a little windbreaker, that's all you're going to need. Uh, it's not that bad. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Thomas, such a cold. Oh, my goodness. Thomas Henry, just check that. Uh, that is just under 74 Fahrenheit. I don't even I don't even heat our house that warm in the winter. Uh, we heat 67, uh, 67 degrees, which is 19.4 Celsius. So we don't even keep our house at 22 degrees. What's the deal? Uh, I hear you. Anyway, uh, Thomas Henry, I didn't see any yes or no to my Facebook question about the ship artwork. You interested in? I have a couple of them hung on the wall right now. Interesting. Uh, Thomas Henry, the cloud doggies uh, went up first, uh, sort of like your cloud pick only with doggies. Okay. <laughs> this is a private conversation I'm in on here. And Jordan, bring on summer. I didn't see that Thomas story. I didn't see that Thomas story. Uh, Bruce just got the Amazon confirm on the dehumidifier. $672. That should yield you a few hot dogs. Boy, I can't wait to see this, like I said, on my Amazon affiliate link uh, printout tomorrow. I'll see it tomorrow morning. Every day I get the report, what happened yesterday? Uh, how many people visited your thing, your affiliate link? Uh, and did anyone buy anything? And if so, what did they get? I have no idea who does what, but I get to see what's, what's been ordered. And then it shows me what's been shipped. And uh, uh, this is exciting. This is really something. I can't wait for the moral. MG Toe is here, 69 degrees here in the Deep South. Welcome back, MG. And Jordan Thomas, is it in pics on Facebook? Just trying to find it. Thomas, mm, MG, that's a bit vague. Uh, trivia time. Where is MG close uh, close to be? Let's see. Deep South. I'll guess Baton Rouge. Where does MG hang out? Uh, that's the big trivia question. Uh, Richard C. Hello, Bruce. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back, sir. <coughs> Thomas Henry, um, it was a question then about whether anyone was interested in seeing the art I bought on the last cruise. Uh, Tracy Dunlop. Hello, Bruce. And everyone, another hot one in Naples, Florida today. Uh, by the way, here in Creston, sunny day. Hot, 82, 83 degrees. That's hot for us. Uh, child's play for those of you in Florida. Uh, but uh, it's a warm one here. I got my fan on. I'm trying to stay cool. I'm trying not to put the air conditioning on today. Uh, Thomas Henry, we bought a lot, but three Thomas Kincaids are huge. Didn't remember them being that large on the ship. Laugh out loud. <laughs> and Jordan, okay, you got to. Got a Okay, Thomas, I got to check it out. Uh, Thomas Henry, hi, Tracy. Uh, Paul Wilgus. Hi, Bruce and all. It cooled down a bit, 81, but still very humid here in Virginia. That would still be warm. And Debbie is here. Debbie Manuel. Hi, Bruce and Thomas, Tracy, Richard, Peter, MG, down. Forecast is 95 today in Northern California. I think it's 10 days to go for you, Debbie, for your cruise. Uh, Thomas Henry, those dehumidifiers are for work office and outer area where the humidity was running at 65%. Hope it'll help cure me of the cough that is now five weeks old. Me too, Thomas. You don't need that. Thomas Weber, hi, Bruce, is 68 and cloudy here in Palos Verdes. Fantastic weather there. Cool Jazz, hi, Bruce, overcast and 83 here in the Big Apple. Welcome, Cool Jazz. Uh, Richard C., I hope Amazon will sell cars direct. <laughs> I will link you. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> cars and motorbikes, yeah, please. <laughs> I can't wait for Amazon to start a cruise ship division. That, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Thomas Henry, send all your uh, PBS donations to Bruce. Yes, please. Send Bruce the PBS donations. He needs it. Oh, my goodness. Paul Willis, hi, Debbie. Debbie. Diane is here. Diane Barnett, uh, going on my first cruise September 22nd. That's my birthday. You're going on a cruise on my birthday, September 22nd. Seven days, Carnival Freedom. Fantastic. You couldn't have picked a better day, the day I turned 63. Uh, that's fantastic. Your first cruise ever. Where are you going? You're going to the Freedom. Seven days. It's got to be a Caribbean cruise, I'm guessing. Uh, tell us what ports are you going to? Where, where are you going to stop on your cruise? And uh, we'll, 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 the gang will tell you about the ports. Uh, Let's see, we're going. Debbie Manuel, how exciting, Diane. Very happy for you. Paul Wiggles saying hi, Anne. Diane, uh, hi, uh, thank you, Debbie. Scott Batchley, hi there, everyone. Nice day again in Ventura, but that is why we live here. I mean, come on. I mean, why do you think we're here? It's Ventura, California. It's always nice in Ventura, California. Welcome back, pal. MG Toe. Thomas, I'm in Southern California. Southern California. Okay, now the guess is where in Southern California is this guy? Uh, here we go. The trivia question, where's MG Toe? Sea Keeper is here. Hi, Bruce and all. 92 Fahrenheit in the shade. Damp, but still comfortable. Thumbs up. May you be monetized tomorrow morning. Oh, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? I'll tell you, though, uh, uh, the longer this goes, uh, you know, the less I depend on it uh, eventually. But I'm just, it's just the principle of the thing that gets me the most that I'm working my tail off with eight live streams and then other videos. And I'm getting nothing for it. And, uh, you know, these people, uh, these YouTubers, 
they could be selling ads uh, to my for my work that will hit a wonderful demographic of people. Uh, the advertisers will pay dearly to get a message in front of you guys, uh, and they're not and monetize me. I just I just I hate being included in the crap pile with everybody else. I, I just I just feel I just feel we're not you know we're not doing crap. But then again, uh, you know I'm a small channel. I don't count uh, 2,274 subscribers puny in the youtube world but then again the requirement is a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time i got 2274 subscribers i got forty thousand hours of watch time uh what's the hold up i i'm i'm just stumped by it. it's 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 hundreds of dollars a month it is hundreds this is month four going on to month five now it's thousands of dollars and that's where i'm getting po'd <laughs> I'm <laughs> getting PO'd about it. In any event, there you go. Uh, Diane Barnett is so excited about her cruise, and you should be. Uh, laugh out loud, uh, steaming. Uh, Diane, uh, steamer, I would be a ding -a ling to fly on the day of my cruise just playing wackadoodle. Absolutely, steamer. Steamer, you were a star yesterday, and you weren't even here. You were one of the co stars of this telecast yesterday, and you weren't even here. We were. I was stalling. Hoping you join because you normally come around with an hour to go or an hour in to the show. I mean, you're usually here about an hour in, and you didn't show up yesterday on my live telecast. I don't know if you have seen yesterday's show, but buddy, buddy, you gotta watch yesterday's show to be up to speed what was going on here because it started so innocently with a question from Jim Thomas, and it went downhill from there. I tell you, uh, you have no idea, my friend, what happened yesterday. Diane, I'm almost grateful that you've joined me today rather than yesterday. But then on the other hand, you know, if you want a good laugh, <laughs> you want a good laugh, uh, you can watch yesterday's telecast that I did at 5 o'clock um, where, uh, where we were talking about, uh, what was the title of yesterday's show anyway? It was talking about, uh, oh, living full-time on a cruise ship, living on the horizon, uh, the carnival horizon full-time for like at least the winter. Uh, check that show out, Diane. And uh, oh man, the steamer missed something. Uh, he's got to check that show out. Mary Ellen Shaw, uh, heat index of 107 right now in South Carolina. Oh, Mary Ellen, stay indoors. Keep the fans going. Oh my goodness. Get yourself a lemonade. Put something in the lemonade to make it easier to take. Oh my gosh. That has got to be uncomfortable. Cool jazz. Hello, Anne. How are you doing today? Thomas Henry, great MG. I never thought about the deep south being in the West Coast. I, I thought. We always speak of Deep South as, you know, New Orleans, uh, Mobile, uh, Montgomery, uh, you know, down there. But, hey, Southern California is the Deep South. Um, let's see here. Sea Keeper, I can't wait for the meet and greet. Me neither. Diane Barnett, uh, we're driving but still going a day ahead. Uh, good on you. Good on you. Uh, well done. Well done. Uh, Thomas Henry. Bean, did you hear the shower story yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> the trolls will be looking for you. Oh my goodness, Thomas Henry, Sea Keeper, good for the M for the M and G. Just just not in the shower lap. <laughs> oh my goodness, Steamy Bean, thirty one degrees in Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan. Uh, just returned from the field. Uh, we were celebrating Elders Day, right on. Mark the Lost Traveler, hello everybody. It's a steam bath here in Virginia. Oh man, Mark the Lost Traveler, welcome back, buddy. Been a while since you've been on a live show. Nice to have you here. And Jordan, yes, Thomas, put the artwork up on Facebook. Love to see it. Seakeeper, what is this about a shower? A brief explanation, please. Seakeeper, where were you yesterday? What happened to you? Uh, I thought you watched my shows. Uh, you signed in yesterday morning. I know you were here at the beginning of the show. What happened to you at the end of the show? Did you leave me? Did you? Did, you, did, did something come up? Because, oh, my goodness, uh, the show took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie Bean saying, hey, Sea Keeper. Scott Batchley would love some extra jets in that shower. Oh, my goodness. It's all about the shower. Debbie Emanuel, you never want to fly in to meet your crews the day of embarkation. Never. Ne never. Too many things can cause delay. Yeah. Yeah. Less headache. Uh, get in at, at least one day prior. No need for extra stress. Exactly. Exactly. As soon as I catch up with these messages, I have a story for you. Thomas Henry, Bruce, do you think the problem is as a pod, like the star was suffering back in late March when it was unable to get up to speed, it caused it cruised at 17, 18 knots. Thomas, it could well be an Amazon a, a, as as a pod issue on the uh, on the um, uh, Carnival Magic. Uh, it could be a uh, a mechanical issue uh, for the steering ability or 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 you know whatever. I just don't know. I there you know 
no one's saying. Silo, uh, Silo Steve, hey, Bruce and everyone, 86 for the high in Seattle today, 62 for the low. 129 days until the Mexican Riviera aboard the Bliss in the Haven. Right on, buddy. 129 to go. Hanging in there. MG Tow rumors on Cruise Critic abound. Uh, Norwegian to charge $25 uh, embarkation and $25 debarkation fee. Not faster to the fun sort of thing. Also, Norwegian is going to charge a $5 main dining room fee. The nickel and diming continues at Norwegian. The rumors are flying. Uh, MG Toe, thank you for that. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, there's, he goes on to say here, and a buffet still free and a $5 reservation fee for shows and comedy clubs, etc. Let's see what happens. And, and on the uh, Epic, I was on that ship, the Epic Norwegian. Uh, you had to make a reservation to go into the comedy club. You had to make a reservation to see the show. You had to make a reservation. And now you're wondering, are they going to charge extra? Uh, depending on the class of room you're in, uh, the nickel and diming. This is going to piss people off. It's going to make them mad. I don't know. We're going to see what happens. Bob Hollis, Magic is on their normal schedule, he's saying. The ship normally is scheduled to dock at 11.30, leaving at 7. Yes, they did leave late, but made it up getting into Dominican Republic on Monday. Still no schedule. Uh, of course, Dominican Republic is so close by, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have been an issue. You know, they had plenty of time to do it. Uh, Bob, yeah, I, you know, I, I, like I said, I got an email from um, someone else uh, uh, this morning. And they got a letter from Carnival telling them we're not going to uh, St. Thomas on your cruise due to a technical issue. So, uh, I, I, you know, Bob, I don't know what's going on. Uh, what, what's... What's happening here? Um, we do know they were late leaving uh, the other night out of uh, Port Canaveral. Paul Wilkes, laugh aloud, Thomas. Yeah, Bean, you should have been here yesterday to defend yourself. I, I don't think you needed defending. I, I think you would have been in on this. You would have been part of this discussion. I, Paul, I'm, I'm telling you. Diane, has anyone here gone to uh, uh, Mr. Sancho's in Cozumel? Uh, is, is it a good excursion experience if you're looking to just relax and have a good time? Anybody got an answer for that one for Diane? Let me know. Thomas Henry, uh, got it, Anne. We'll do, still have three boxes to open. I'll have to put a yard Put a yard still in the pick so you can see how big the Thomas Kincaid picks are. Uh, and she's saying, Thomas, uh, awesome, Thomas. Thomas, and flying out same day is stressful too. Make sure you leave a good number of hours after the ship arrival. So mid-afternoon is my suggestion. Uh, Richard C. Steaming, we flew in the day of the cruise, uh, but booked airfare throughout the cruise through the cruise line, which guaranteed flight connection to the ship. The snowstorm hit, and they held the ship for us and 300 other people. How uh, that works, Richard, is as long as you come in on that day. But if you're not coming in on that day, like if you miss coming in that day, the ship's gone, and no matter what the guarantees are, because the ship cannot sit there uh, in that port. That pier is reserved for the next ship coming in the next morning, and that ship has got to get to its first port of call because they got a, a pier reserved there, whether it's a it's day at sea, and then they get to where they're going or the next morning they're in the Bahamas and Nassau. Uh, I would imagine, though, that if you missed your flight or if you if the flight was canceled or, or, or delayed or whatever, you couldn't get in, then the ship will work with the travel agents to get you on a plane to Nassau to catch the ship there or to St. Thomas or to San Martin. You know, wherever the ship's going, they'll fly, but you're going to miss several days of your cruise. Um, and I do not know whether you're entitled to any compensation for that whatsoever. This This is beyond me. I don't know. If it's a if it's a weather issue, the airlines might be able to get away with it, not have to compensate you. If it's mechanical, uh, they should compensate you. Anyway, well, we'll you know that's another story for another day. Um, MG Toe. Also, the ships are going to com compete with the hotels by allowing people on ships to board three days before the cruise. No gaming, but lots of booze. Uh, this depends, I guess, on the cruise ship and the cruise line. Uh, Silo Debbie, how long till the bliss? Thomas Henry, nine days till Debbie goes. Uh, MG Toe, 10 days, 10 day cruises, he's thinking, MG Toe. Thomas Henry counting down for some good Alaskan picks. Debbie Manuel, 10 days away. Yahoo, she's going 10 days. And Jordan, yes, Debbie Bliss, 10 days away. Uh, Thomas Henry, depends on the count, Debbie. Uh, I count Thursday. Saturday is only nine full days. Makes it sooner. <laughs> there you go. You got fans, Debbie. Uh, we'll do my best uploading picks ASAP. I can't wait, Debbie. Mark, the lost traveler. I hear people all the time complain about they're going to miss the cruise because their their flight their flight was late. Sorry, should have phoned the day before. Next passenger, please get out of my way. Next, yes, I I hear you, Mark. There 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 really can be no mercy to the passengers flying on an airplane the day of a cruise. Uh, you've got to be at the port by four o'clock, or you miss your cruise, and you're leaving here at nine in the morning, and it's a three hour flight, two hour time difference, and it's our fault. Like, oh yeah, you're taking chances, folks. You shouldn't be taking. Silo, Steve, Debbie. Even if you don't gamble, 
take 20 bucks. And, and the casino on day one and two, the Wheel of Fortune penny slot was a little, uh, was a great little machine. I turned five bucks into $179. A buddy won seven grand, spent very little. <laughs> How about that? And Jordan, hey, Tracy, hey, St hey, Silo. Tammy Ray, good afternoon, everyone. I always fly out the day before a cruise just to be safe. Tammy Ray, you're absolutely right. That's what you got to do. Seakeeper, about today's topic. I avoid flying uh, uh, to the cruise terminal. I avoid flying to the cruise terminal. I drive uh, a short drive and I'm there. The TSA enjoys frisking fluffy people. Stop pawing me. We don't know each other. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just want to be, I don't even want to be your friend. I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, of course, Seakeeper lives in Florida and he can drive to Tampa. He can drive to Orlando or over to Port Canaveral. He can drive over to uh, Fort Lauderdale. He can go over to Miami and he's just going like that at us because he can do that. And we have to fly in because we're so far away. Diane Cozumel, Belize, Mahogany Bay. Folks, uh, those are her ports. What should she be doing there? And what is the thought on the stop in Cozumel that she asked about? Anybody got an idea on that? Steamy Bean, 24 days until my cruise. Steamer, 24 days. Debbie Emanuel, holy cow, Silo. Thanks for that. Sure will be uh, sure will be in the casino. My mother will be there even more. <laughs> the Steamy Bean, I had no idea that I was a co-star yesterday. Was uh, was at home laid up with strep throat. You're at home. Laid up with strep throat, and you didn't watch the show? You're killing me. You're killing me, Steamer. You had the chance to just sit there and be part of the whole thing. Oh, we were just waiting for a couple of one-liners from you all during the show, and everyone's asking, where is he? I can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Lisa Moore, yes, uh, Streaming Bean, Streaming Bean, <laughs> Streaming Bean watched it. Oh, uh, Silo, uh, Wayland was on my Alaska cruise, so I uh, got to talk to him for a short minute. Nice guy, Wayland. Oh, okay. Thomas, uh, Thomas, uh, Henry, uh, they should have mentioned everyone. They should have mentioned everyone was wearing a bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> or were they? <laughs> or were they? I don't know. Uh, Cam is here. Hi, everybody. Seakeeper, I had to go help in the kitchen, so I left the show early. I will check out yesterday's broadcast. Seakeeper, it was epic. Uh, in the last 20-odd minutes of the show, it just it just took a turn. Uh, it just came out of the blue, and it just went from there. Lisa, Cam, where are the pictures? Uh, Thomas Henry, hi, Cam. Cam, oh, I have quite a few of them. I'll post them today after the show on uh, the Traveling with Bruce uh, uh, Facebook page. Randy, look a shower, anyone? Laugh out loud. Here's one of the instigators right there. Uh, Randy, steamer is here. Uh, Lisa, we're cool. I can't wait. Uh, and Jordan, I'm great, uh, Jazz. Uh, fly in the day before cruise. So many delays can happen. Absolutely. Peter Heckman, uh, even when we can drive to a cruise port in Florida, we go over the night before, except when the ship goes out of Tampa Bay only because we're one hour away from Tampa Bay. Uh, Darina Dorsey is here. Uh, Mr. Sanchos is fantastic. Highly recommend it. There we go. Fantastic. Thank you. Darina for that, and I, I don't know if Darina's been here before or if this is the first time Darina has made a comment. Uh, welcome to the show and the channel. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Lisa Moore, Cam, was uh, was the food good on the, and the shows? Question mark. Uh, Diane Barnett, uh, thank you, Darina. Cam, the food was delicious and the shows were amazing. I've been thinking about them all day and getting sad. Laugh out loud. My cruise withdrawal is worse today than yesterday. It's terrible, isn't it? The withdrawal. Uh, that's why you got to come here to this channel for cruise addicts to talk about cruising, to try to help you. We will try to help you get through the tough times and the hard spot. Cam, you got to book another cruise. Uh, Jim Thomas, hello, Bruce, was dealing with my mental illness from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, Jim, it was so, 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 so stressful. It was all Jim Thomas. It started with Jim. The innocent question was posed by Jim and the whole thing went another direction. And uh, Randy got into it. I'm into this thing. And the steamer got brought in, whether he knew it or not. And the steamer is at home suffering from strep throat. He wasn't watching the show. I can't believe it. Steamer, you got to see what happened. Oh, my goodness. Jim, you're still recovering from the mental illness of what happened yesterday. <laughs> Cam, my family doesn't love cruising like I do. They were all ready to go, but but not me. Cruising is in my heart. <laughs> uh, it's Mark Lost Traveler. Airlines never guarantee and if it's weather, you get nothing either. It's called Act of Mother Nature. Right on, Mark the Lost Traveler. You got it, buddy. Debbie Manuel Thomas, uh, th uh, think trouble may have been. <laughs> no one mentioned suits in the shower. <laughs> no one mentioned it. Uh, and Jordan, still nightmare images, Randy. Laugh out loud. And Jordan, ditto, Debbie. Laugh it out loud. Steaming bean. I, I wait in anticipation. 
I can't wait to see this. What happened yesterday on that show? Mark the Lost Traveler, don't think it was a cruise show yesterday. Maybe Triple X. <laughs> we had good intentions, Mark. We really did. We had very good intentions. I talked all about the Carnival Horizon. I tried to keep it clean. I tried to keep it family based, you know, and, and talked about how you can spend 12 cruises consecutively on the uh, Carnival Horizon from January until the end of March and, and, and live on that whole ship for the whole winter while people are spending way more money in California in condos or way more money on five star hotels on the beach. I did the best I could. And then Jim Thomas dropped me this question and all of a sudden it just went nuts. I, I'm telling you, I can't help. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And Jordan, we got lost, Mark. We got lost. Uh, Thomas Henry, at least they didn't discuss having sword fights. Laugh out loud. No, we didn't do that. We didn't have. <laughs> or lightsabers or anything else. Uh, no, we didn't go there. I mean... Uh, it was a cruise show gone silly. Ah, uh, yes, out of control. Uh, the plot thickens. The steamer is now really wondering, what the heck were you guys doing yesterday on this show? Uh, I leave you guys for one day. I'm suffering from strep throat for one day. I leave you guys alone for just a few hours, and this happens? Do I have to keep you guys in line? He's asking, what's going on? Randy Lucas, I take full responsibility for yesterday's show going down. <laughs> 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 and Jordan is loving it. I got to tell you what a show that was. Uh, Debbie Emanuel. Oh, Thomas. Uh, laughing my ass off. <laughs> Chandler, next show. What happens in a cruise shower? Stays in a cruise shower. <laughs> oh, it's the Las Vegas of cruising is what happened here. I tell you, folks, uh, unbelievable. I am. Um, I'm just the host, and I, I do the best I can to control the crowd, but I can't really control the crowd. I mean, they say what they say, and, and, and I got to go with them on where they're headed. I do the best I can to guide people, you know, but I, I can't stop it. in any of it. <laughs> with today's topic, which we've been covering very well already, never, ever, ever, ever fly into a cruise port on the day of your cruise. You just don't do it. You, you know, you just don't do it. Uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> Peter Heckema. I got to replay yesterday's show. It must have been good. <laughs> Thomas Henry. Remember what is said on Traveling with Bruce. Stays in Traveling with Bruce. Don't spread it around. Well, actually, we got to go social media on this. We got to spread the word. I mean, I need the views. <laughs> uh, lots of sort of references. How fun. Uh, Steamer saying Jim Thomas. All I know is room service would have been so happy to clean that shower. <laughs> That's biscuits. <laughs> I'm not gonna pass on with biscuits and gravy everywhere. <laughs> Jordan, I agree, Thomas. <laughs> Thomas Bean must have been, it must have been very crowded in the shower with the other three. I'm telling you, Steamy Bean, if I were an exotic dancer, I would be confused whether to charge the customers by the pound or by the inch. <laughs> oh, my. Um, that's cool, Jess. You lost the show 10 minutes after it started. It's over. It's okay. You lost it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, my, 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 Debbie, man. Oh, Jimbo. Uh, Mary Ellen Shaw, I'm driving from South Carolina to Florida for my cruise in September on the Oasis. I'm still going a day ahead to ease my stress. Good one, Mary. Well said. That's what you got to do. Absolutely. Mark, the lost traveler. Are we talking about cruising? Uh, we're trying to. Mark, Tracy, don't look. I was laughing <laughs> yesterday after the five o'clock show until trivia at eight o'clock. The pictures in my mind you got <laughs> of all you guys. <laughs> It just, it was just, oh, there were mental images going out. It was like, it was kind of like listening to a radio show in a way. Uh, oh, what you think, you think, you see. Mark Lost Traveler, need to ch change the show to Showering with Bruce. <laughs> uh, Seakeeper Bean, a a any way you look at it, uh, my build would be humongous. <laughs> and Jordan is loving it. Steam and Bean laughing out loud. All right, never, ever fly to your cruise port on the day of the cruise. I read a story today 
couple out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. 40th anniversary uh, was going to be celebrated on the cruise ship. They booked months and months and months in advance for their cruise. They had it all planned out with excursions. They had it all planned out with a romantic honeymoon evening dinner. The whole nine yards. I mean, it was going to be something special. And they showed up at the airport at four in the morning for their flight to Miami on, you guessed it, the day of the cruise. And they get there and find out after checking in, the flight is delayed because the flight, the plane, is delayed from where it's at in the States, getting up to Toronto in the first place. And it arrived much later, and they ended up taking another flight to where did they get them to atlanta and then they didn't make they didn't make their ship they missed their ship and they ended up having to meet their ship on the third day of their cruise and i'm trying to remember where this was it might have been cozumel i'm not 100 percent sure it hardly matters because the anniversary day was day two of the cruise and they didn't get on the ship until day three and it was all over uh, and the crying has begun. And they want compensation from the airline saying that this cost them 5000 uh, bucks in missed opportunity and blah, 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 blah. And the airline has offered them a $100 credit on a future flight because Mother Nature caused the delay in the flight coming into Toronto. And if you are out of Chicago going to Miami, that's dicey enough, especially in the wintertime, to fly domestically, but if you're out of Canada, you've got to go through U.S. Customs. Are you kidding me? Are are, are you out of your mind? Uh, you you've got you pre-clear U.S. Customs at the airport. Sounds easy, sounds simple. Uh, but if the plane has got mechanical issues uh, and you got to come out of there, uh, you got to come out back into Canada, quote unquote. So through Canada Customs with your luggage. And then try to rebook. It's a nightmare. It's a bloody nightmare. Uh, is it any wonder these folks uh, missed their flight? Do not, do not fly down on the uh, on the uh, day of the cruise uh, to catch your cruise. You got to go the day before, at the very least, because in this case here, they would have missed their flight. They would have been late. They would have probably been diverted, or they would have gotten a flight to Atlanta and then a quick hop over to Miami, or they would have got a flight to maybe uh, Newark. New York, uh, Philadelphia, Chicago, and they could have connected to Miami. But a long day, but they would have got to Miami that night. And the next morning, the cruise ship will be waiting for them. Uh, they could have crashed in their hotel at whatever time they got there, and so be it. Now, on the other hand, you know, they get on the airplane on time. The plane flies to Miami, gets there on time, and they're there the day before on time. And they're looking at each other going, oh, you know, we should have we just gone tomorrow. You know, we got... Why did we do this? Why did we go today? Because now we got to kill a whole day in Miami. What is there possibly to do for 24 hours in Miami? What what's there to see? Are you kidding me? I mean, really, you got nothing to see and do in Miami for 24. Hours? You're in Miami. Rent a car, cheap. It's Florida, you know. And that, a check out. Uh, get get to a local Costco and pick up a couple bottles of wine. Throw throw them in your luggage. Grab some colas. Uh, but do some pre-cruise shopping the day before. And save a bunch of dough on the cruise. Aren't you think? Just because it's your anniversary doesn't mean you stop thinking. But the best laid plans of this wonderful couple, I really feel for them. 40th anniversary. She's tolerated this guy for 40 years. You got to cut her some slack. Uh, they go through all that planning on the cruise and all the all the anticipation and all the, the the you know the excitement of the whole thing and all the pre-booking. They probably pre-booked their excursions. They probably pre-booked everything. They just arranged it all, and the whole thing got shot to hell. One little mistake, and that is trying to fly in on the day of the cruise and throwing the dice and rolling them. Snake eyes, you lose again, and there is no compensation unless you've got travel interruption insurance. You're done for, and they didn't. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, something you've got to absolutely be a stickler about, and you've got to be dedicated to the fact that I'm protecting my investment for the two of us to go on this cruise uh, for two people in a ha in a haven suite for a one week cruise on the Bliss in the Caribbean. Uh, what are we talking about here? Uh, three grand a person, a six thousand dollar cruise. 
taxes, tips, fees, excursions, especially restaurants, drinks, $8,000 a person, a, a couple? You want to risk $8,000 by not flying in the day before and spending 60 bucks in a hotel or 100 bucks in a hotel? Are you kidding me? You, you, you're, not, you're not thinking. You, you, you got to protect yourself. That's why you fly in the day before on a cruise. Every time, especially from another country like Canada, you got to do it. Absolutely. Um, Mark, the lost traveler, no, sea keeper, uh, uh, Bean, uh, no, hang on, hang on. I'm trying to catch up here. Sorry. <laughs> Ah, it's Stevie Bean. Bruce, the new Howard Stern. Thank you. Uh, St uh, Tracy Dunlop. I, I would just hope the room steward didn't walk in when you were all trying to figure out the shower lap. I, would I, I don't know if this, I don't think the room steward could have gotten into there. Uh, he would have, he would open the door, you know, uh, room steward, he, he would have heard the commotion. He would have shut the door and run down the hallway and gone downstairs, down below and hidden in his, in his, uh, in his little uh, cot down there. He wouldn't want to come out of there for days. <laughs> Cool jazz. Good luck with that request from the airlines. Exactly. Cool jazz. Two hubs I never flew into at all. O'Hare in Chicago and Cincinnati, Ohio. Thomas Henry, how about a train? My train from New York City to Richmond on Sunday was continuing to Miami. I thought, oh, and I could take the train and not need to reserve a hotel. I don't know. Only the train that stopped in Richmond at 10.07 p.m., 30 minutes late, was not due until Miami till late afternoon the next day. Too late for embarkation. Don't you be doing that. Oh, no. Not U.S. trains. You want to rely on the United States train railway system? Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? That's the third world. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. In Europe, these uh, these uh, uh, train operators in Europe, they'd be arrested <laughs> for, for public safety violations. Amtrak in Europe would never survive ever. Not a chance. No, you don't do that. Don't, don't be doing that. Oh my gosh, I pity people who have to take Amtrak uh, all the time because uh, of the incidents. How many deaths on Amtrak in the last two years? How many in five years? Ridiculous. It's third world, third world numbers. Absolutely outrageous. Congress does butt kiss for you guys on that. Unbelievable. You Americans, you got to get your country back. You got to take your country back. It's not happening. It's not good. Um, let's see here, Randy Lucas. The only time I have ever arrived the day of my cruise once when I drove to the port. Uh, even then, most uh, most times, I go the day before. Absolutely, Randy. Uh, so Mark Lost Traveler, uh, make sure when you book a cruise, take into account the time of the year because weather, it happens all the time. Just because it's sunny in Florida, the plane will not leave in a snowstorm. The plane will not leave in a hailstorm. The plane will not leave with lightning and, and whatever happening either. And the plane that you're on from say, oh, I don't know, let's say you're flying in from uh, Cincinnati or you're flying in from Denver, but the plane you're getting on has to come to you from Chicago first. In Chicago, there's problems. It can't get out of Chicago in time and it's gonna get into Denver late, which means it's gonna leave Denver late and you're not gonna make it on time on the day of the cruise. You're just not gonna make it. You gotta avoid this problem. Cool jazz, Thomas Henry, never trust Amtrak. That's for leisure riding, they never, never on time. MG Toe, this is why you should always have good trip insurance. MG, good point. Mark the Lost Traveler, working 30 years for the airlines. I can not I can tell you some stories. Yes, you can. Mark, I gotta have you on as a guest. I gotta have you on on my channel. We have to have you on so we can hear you because we need stories. And Jordan, cool jazz, what's Amtrak? We don't have that system here. And Jordan, you don't want it. You don't want Amtrak in your country. Your government will be defeated in the first general election after you institute Amtrak. How the American government can survive elections, uh, I know why. Because Amtrak doesn't serve most of the country. Amtrak serves 2% of the United States of America's population, almost nothing. And there aren't enough voters to team up and gang up and vote out their politicians. The United States is the richest country in the world. The greatest country in the world, such potential, and they don't have high speed rail. Unbelievable. Now, I would love high speed rail in my country, in Canada, but we can't afford it. We only have 35 million people living in the entire country. And so for us, it's impractical to have high speed rail from coast to coast. So there's rail in Ontario, Eastern Canada, and even that is so so quality. But high speed rail could work in the United States, could work big time. Unfortunately, there are uh, political um, uh, groups at work to ensure that'll never happen. The airlines are one. The automakers are two. The folks supplying all that asphalt and the bridge construction for the states for their highway system, number three. They don't want high-speed rail. Bad for business. So, uh, yeah, they're going to just keep it the way it is. And you're gambling. 
if you want to make your cruise on the same day, you're gambling. Uh, and Jordan, uh, let's see, it's cool jazz. Safe to say he never got any uh, on his anniversary. <laughs> uh cool jazz uh pastor real service in the usa oh my goodness and jordan okay um uh, are they any good no they're no good uh steamy bean four guys inside a cabin trying to figure out the shower oh my steamer i'm telling you you gotta watch that episode you're not gonna believe what happened in the oh my god cool jazz very unreliable but that's because they don't own the tracks freight companies own them and they have priority that's right and the lobbyists make sure that the freight companies get priority oh it's a beautiful little system oh it's so stacked against the taxpayer uh it's so stacked unbelievable steamy bean showering with bruce what happens on norwegian stays on norwegian mark the lost travel where amtrak is really on time and that's because amtrak only owns about 300 miles of track freight goes first that's why in germany the other way around in germany you have freight lines over here you have passenger lines over here the fastest connections between cities passenger lines federal law forget the states forget the cities you don't count federal law the federal government ensures that passenger service in Germany, France, Italy, and other countries is priority number one, number one priority. You want to own a car and register a car and license a car and insurance, you pay through the nose in Germany for that. But you want to go on a train? Cheap, efficient, fast, reliable, on time, every time and everywhere. Everywhere. It's incredible. Just incredible. But that's another country. It's another topic. Thomas Henry, cool. True to uh, true in Virginia, but pretty good from New York to DC. Our 30 minute was lost north of Philly due to signal issues. There aren't signal issues in Germany or France. <laughs> there are no signal issues. No, <laughs> unforgivable. Cool jazz. Uh, Via is just as bad, Bruce, giving him the sign. Oh my God. Via rail. Oh my Lord. That is a joke in the making as well. In Canada, uh, there used to be passenger rail up until the 70s, a CN rail, Canadian National, and CP rail, Canadian Pacific. The original railroad across Canada, Canada was Canadian Pacific Railroad, and they uh, unified British Columbia to Eastern Canada, CP, uh, the CPR, Canadian Pacific Railroad. Uh, up until the 70s, they ran passenger train, and they were begging, begging the government, please let us out. Please, please let us not do this anymore. We don't want to do this anymore. Please let us stop doing this. And the government was saying, no, no, we're letting you run rail for freight. you got to offer passenger service through the 50s and the 60s. you got to keep doing it. And the, and the rails, rail lines are going, please, we, we don't want to do it anymore. We just, we're losing money hand over fist. Well, yeah, of course they are. Why? Because they're running their passenger trains on the same line of the, of the freight. Freight cars are heavier than you can imagine, and you have this heaving coming up through winter and spring and summer because these freight cars, these rail cars with freight, just heave it up like you can't believe you can't run a passenger train at a fast speed. And so <clears throat> without legislation and without compensation from the federal government to help build high-speed passenger-only lines, which have much lighter trains on them, uh, the, the train companies are going, we're not going to build passenger lines ourselves uh, unless you help us do it. The feds didn't want to do it. They didn't want to raise taxes. And so the whole thing was left to go. And so the government finally made a concession. They created a crown corporation called Via Rail. The United States has Amtrak. And Via Rail runs passenger lines in Canada, but only in eastern Canada because in the west, they shut it down. They shut it down completely in the west uh, because it was really impractical out here under the current system today. If you had a high-speed line in Ontario between Ontario and Quebec with 20-plus million people, you could make it work in on a number of cases, but you need a dedicated line. Even to this day, today, study after study after study comes out and says, high-speed rail will work in Canada, just build dedicated passenger lines, and that's where it stops. The study is accepted by the government and filed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Because the bill is in the billions, and every year it goes up. In the meantime, China, from a standing start, with steam locomotives 10 years ago, steam locomotives operating on coal in China 10, 15, 20 years ago, completely changed over all high-speed rail on electric on electric electricity. The number one country in the world with mileage and the number of trains and the number of passengers, they're number one. And they're still building it out because it's a national priority. There's nothing stopping it. It's a national, it's like a national emergency to do it. And you've made China mobile. So a peasant farmer in one part of China can come to Shanghai and visit relatives and go back home at almost 300 miles an hour in smooth comfort. That's first world comfort. 
United States, Canada, we aren't doing it. We're not prepared to pay. We're not prepared to pay. We'd rather go for tax cuts than make the investments. And that's the deal. That's what's happening right now. Uh, Thomas Henry, the freight co uh, treats Amtrak like a bastard child. Bingo, uh, Thomas, you got it. Uh, Richard C., just finished all my travel regions from East Coast to Sydney, Australia. And no, I'm I'm flying out 12 days in advance. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Scott Weber, California is building one. Uh, and and Scott, is that a battle? They're still fighting in court, aren't they? It's 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 been what 20 years, 15 years? The courts are still full of uh, cases. Environmentalists are putting up all kinds of garbage arguments. Unbelievable resistance to something that makes so much sense. It is incredible. Uh, sea Keeper via rail in Canada is one of the devil's proudest inventions. Yes. Scott Batchley, I always go on a couple days early. Going on the bliss in September and arriving early, we'll check out Seattle for a couple of days. Uh, why, why, why stress out? Exactly, Scott. Enjoy Seattle. Seattle's got so much to see and do. It's a fantastic place. You'll love it. Mark Lost Traveler. When I traveled in uh, in Asia, train were, were on time every time. I, he was in train. He was in Asia. He was on train on trains. They were on time every time. Absolutely right. Cool Jazz saw Via was late forty three hours a few weeks ago. Forty three hours late. Yeah, the donkey was uh, tired. It needed to be fed. Unbelievable. Peter Heckema, a few years ago, there was a talk about a high-speed line train from Montreal to Toronto. Never got done. Too bad. And it won't get done. Uh, Quebec won't pay. Ontario won't pay. Ottawa won't pay. No private company wants in. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, unless Ottawa just steps up and says, we're doing it. That's it. That's it. We're, expro we're going to expropriate the line. We're going to force farmers to give us the land for the line. We're going to force municipalities to give us access to the Federal jurisdiction. Until they do that, there's a there's only one problem though. <laughs> if you want to be a prime minister in Canada, you got to win Ontario and Quebec votes. <laughs> you're not going to become a prime minister if you're going to openly talk about when I become prime minister. This is what I'm going to do because the business interests will line up the opposition so fast against you, you'll never get elected, and the opposition will win, and there will be no line. It'll be highways only, and the car industry will be smiling from ear to ear, collecting all those subsidies. And every time a car company wants to build a new plant in Ontario for assembly of cars, the governments give them hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation, in gifts, in taxable deductions. Build build cars in my province. We want the jobs. It's unbelievable. The, the payoffs in the billions where it could go to trains never happen. Never happen. Uh, Debbie Manuel, but California train will only go between LA and San Francisco. That is correct, Debbie. It's all it is. It's not, it's not even... More than that, it's only that. Mark the Lost Traveler, too much red tape in the USA, plus people here say you are not putting tracks in my backyard. Exactly, as if they own the country. Uh, yeah, you own your little snippet of land. This is for the national good, end of story. But can't it can't be done. It, it's done in other countries. Uh, it's done in China. Uh, it's done in Germany. It's done in France. And people bitch and yell and scream, but it gets done. And that's the end of it. And the, uh, the, the voters today, you ask a German <laughs> who comes here for a holiday, uh, comes to North America for a holiday. Uh, they hang out for three weeks. They get six weeks a year of paid holiday. They come to the United States and Canada, and they look at us like we're out of our minds. <laughs> like, where's your rail? Where are your, where are your passenger trains? Uh, we tell them, we tell not my backyard, and they just look at us and go, you, you, you guys just don't get it, and it's true. We don't get it, and we're never getting it. That's the problem. Oh my goodness. Uh, cool jazz. Don't doesn't via go west of BC? No. It does not. Uh, Debbie Manuel, Scott, um, uh, us as well. We're going to get there two days early to check out Seattle. Fantastic. Suzanne Hoffman is here. Hi, Suzanne. Cheaper to fly Southwest than Amtrak. Yeah, exactly. Uh, tracks can never be built affordable because of environmental rules and union, ex union expenses and because it's not a national priority. If you can expropriate it under federal law, it's cheap. <laughs> it just stop the speculators in their tracks. But unfortunately, the federal government is owned by lobbyists. And uh, you know that by how many lobbyists are full-timing in Washington. It's unbelievable. It's one of the best jobs you can ever have is being a lobbyist for pharmaceutical industry, the transportation business. Oh, you can really make some good money as a lobbyist in Washington doing that. And you get to meet all these senators all the time. It's wonderful. And Jordan, hope it all goes well, Richard. Uh, Richard C., thanks. And we'll love to see Sydney. Uh, Loss, Mark Loss Traveler took the train from Florida to Virginia 23 hours. I've driven there in 12. <laughs> there you go. There you go, MG Toe. Elon Musk wanted to build high-speed underground between Southern California and Northern California, but it seems not to it seems not to be turning out. So he built flamethrowers instead. I, I think Elon is building a uh, um, underground system in Los Angeles to start things off. He's got one going right now. He's got one under construction. 
I think he's got approval to do one in Chicago as well. Uh, I think he'll do the municipals first within the city and then kind of look at it from there. But uh, I think the the direction for Elon Musk will be those uh, the vacuum tubes uh, where we'll have the, uh, if I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's it's basically it's an above ground system uh, where you're in a, in a vacuum tube and you move, move along at 600 miles an hour. Uh, and when I remember it, I'll tell you what it is, but at the moment I don't remember. And Jordan, you will love it. Lots to do and see in Sydney, Australia. Sea Keeper, you have to enjoy wearing disguises to be Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, Michelle Lucas, uh, bitch, yell and scream. My favorite three words. Uh, Richard C. Ann will be staying at the Sydney Harbor. Fantastic. Thomas Henry, Allegiant Air has uh, good prices. Too bad they uh, they only fly a couple days a week. They, re they don't really want to be in Miami that early and then wait for their return flight. Not enough vacation time. Cool jazz. The Canadian goes from Vancouver to Toronto. Train number one, train number two. Uh, that is not B, I don't believe. I think you might be talking about a private company. There is a private rail company out of Calgary to Vancouver, um, but it is not a, uh, it's not B. I I don't know. I could be wrong. Cool Jazz, you may be right on this. It may be a seasonal thing, but there was a time where there was passenger train service all over Western Canada, and it got killed in the 70s because the train companies wanted out bad, and VIA couldn't get in there. They didn't have enough quality rolling stock to deliver the goods. And uh, by 1980, rail, can rail in Canada was limited to Eastern Canada for to any degree. And even then, it was gosh awful. Just terrible. Uh, and Jordan, nice Richard. Delo Mark Lost Traveler, Allegiant Air. Uh, I think I'll drive. <laughs> Vacuum tubes. Uh, no, I'm thinking about the uh, – uh, there's, a, there's a term that you can that's being coined for this new uh, way of traveling. And it, it is vacuum uh, – long vacuum tubes, yes. And then there's a uh, sort of a, a, a magnetic uh, – unit inside and i'm trying to remember what this is called it's a new form of travel that uh, is being tested right now they've got uh, mock-ups everywhere there's an actual unit being tested just outside of las vegas uh it's, it's already been set up it's about a mile and a half long it's a loop that they're working on uh hyper uh hyper hyper loop hyper loop the hyper loop is what they're talking about as a future uh form of of transportation that isn't rail isn't air it's a combination of the two where you'll have concrete footings in the ground uh, here and here with a with a, uh, a a bridge over them and you know every every you know so many hundred feet another concrete piling and it's just like Disneyland like an elevated elevated uh, train and uh, instead of being a train it's a it's a uh, vacuum tube that goes all the way along the hyperloop and the uh, the uh, you're inside the uh, the compartment inside the uh, the machine the uh, the car inside the, the tunnel and because there's no friction, there's no air, no air resistance, and it's a magnetically operated platform below you, uh, you are shot by electromagnetic uh, impulses, just like a train would be. And it's a smooth ride, and you can go up to 600 miles an hour and not feel it. Um, that's what we're, we're talking about. Maglev and Hyperloop, Scott Batchelor is just throwing in here. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Maglev is a, is a magnetic train. There's only one in operation in the world that I know of in uh, Shanghai from the international airport into now downtown. I think they've just expanded it right to downtown. Lasts 30 odd minutes, can go up to 300 and something miles an hour, and has been running for five or six years now. Very popular, but it's German technology, uh, expensive, but if you build it out in you know hundreds of miles, you can bring down the cost. <clears throat> so far, only China has uh, used it on the Shanghai version. It hasn't gone anywhere else yet that I'm aware of. Although I'm sure they're trying to market it, but uh, at this point I don't know. Uh, let's see. A Canadian train service between Calgary and Vancouver is, is owned by a Japanese company, Peter Singh. Uh, it's private, and it's very expensive. It's incredibly expensive. Uh, Thomas Henry, beam me up, Scotty. Now that's what we need. Debbie Manuel, yes, Elon Musk getting a free pass, letting him do the work in California without environmental review process. But I need a permit to build a doghouse in my backyard. <laughs> there you go, Debbie. You're living in the wrong town, the wrong state. Uh, Scott Batchley, uh, Maglev and Hyperloop School Jazz with Tesla's problems. Uh, do I really want to trust this uh, form of travel? Uh, Thomas Henry, um, anyone watch the old show Sequest? They had Maglev on that sub. It was so long, needed the transport. Uh, cool Jazz, rather do flying cars than the Jetsons, like the Jetsons. Mark the Lost Traveler, Debbie, that's because uh, you're not worth $19 billion. That's why you need a permit for your doghouse. 
Mark the Lost Traveler, I think he gave a few dollars to someone so he could get around all that. Uh, Debbie Manuel, true Mark. Betsy Lane, ha, via rail, Toronto to Vancouver, 1600 a person. Ridiculous. It just, it's just it's so stupid. It's just so, just so ridiculous. Betsy, welcome to the show. Glad you're here. Um, I got a topic here for you today. I've been waiting to get to it. <laughs> I'll try to get to it now. Uh, the cruise supply outlook. Uh, cruise supply over the next 10 years. Um, 10 years ago, in 2008, there were 17 million cruise ship passengers worldwide. This year, the number is expected to be over 27 million. I think 30 million for next year, actually. And by 2027, about 10 years from now, 40 million expected to be going on cruises. So from 17 million in 2008 to 40 million in 2027, 20 years, basically, an increase of 23 million passengers a year taking cruises. And so 104 cruise ships are on order right now for delivery in the next 10 years by the cruise lines. Now, this covers the small cruise lines and the big ones. Uh, average size of each ship of this order, 2,380 passengers, average size. 10 years ago, the largest ships were in the 2000s, maybe 3000s. 15 years ago, I don't know if there were ships holding 2,300. It would have been a, a world record 15 years ago. Today, a 2,300 passenger ship is small. <laughs> Uh, for all in America, they're 21, 2300. Uh, but Carnival, uh, 4,000 for the Horizon, and for Symphony of the Seas, 6,800 passengers. 2,300 passengers, not that big. Virgin Voyages is coming. Ritz Carlton is coming with their own versions of cruise lines for 2020. It's a year and a half away. They're coming out. They will have ship after ship coming behind their first ships. Believe it, they've got deep, deep pockets. Um, the, the, the fascinating uh, thing about the number that I find is that new cruise ships being delivered today and going forward from the, the next couple of years from now, these cruise ships are 20% more efficient than the ships built only a few years ago in fuel efficiency and overall efficiency, 20% more efficient per passenger as a whole, even though the ships are larger than they've ever been in the past. This is a stunning number. It, it, it shows you how technology has really changed and transformed the cruising business. You, can, you know the same is happening in the cargo business. The cargo ships are also quite advanced. The newest, latest, greatest versions of cargo ships will sell uh, like crazy compared to the older style, and so they'll just convert over. Cruise ships right now are coming out with liquid natural gas capable firing engines which is far cleaner burning than with diesel. And so that become a new norm. And uh, there are over two dozen ships on order right now for what they call expedition ships. These are cruise ships that are going to look like super yachts with sort of icebreaker front ends. Uh, these are ships designed to go into the Arctic, into the Antarctic, uh, and sail into some harsh conditions in luxury, pure luxury, at top dollar, and over two dozen expedition ships are on order and being delivered these next few years. This is a new era area of cruising that is taking on and taking off, and it's becoming extremely popular. And uh, it'll appeal to the generation behind mine, the millennials. Uh, that's who they're targeting, without question, because they're looking at the next 20 to 30 years of business. Um, the big boys, uh, Carnival, uh, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, they're after the masses. And so they're building cruise ships with a lot of a lot of modern amenities, very big in size. So they were much more efficient on a per passenger basis. And they're looking to expand the size of these vessels to score the maximum profitability that they can get their hands on. But for those discerning passengers who've got the budget, who've got the money, if you can spend a thousand bucks a night per passenger, the choices you're going to be offered will be phenomenal. Uh, in the 50s and prior, you could spend top dollar and be a first class passenger on Cunard or White Star and cross the Atlantic in style. Uh, but in the uh, modern era, in the last 10 years, those with money were limited to uh, Seaborne, 
uh, Regent Cruising um, and the high-end suites in the big cruise ships. Going forward, the high-end passenger doesn't have to take the uh, Haven suite anymore or an owner's suite on a Carnival cruise ship or a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. They now can get their hands on a suite on Ponant Cruises, which is, a, in effect, these cruise ships are mega-sized yachts is what they are. They hold uh, 100, 200 people max, and you're uh, the top dog on that ship. You'll pay dearly, but you'll be the top dog on only 200 passenger ships. Um, and these expedition ships that are coming, uh, they will take your 2,000 a day, 3,000 a day, 5,000 a day, happily take it, but they will take you to places you've never been before. You can take the Zodiac off the back of the ship and uh, go right on to the icebergs, or they'll take a helicopter off the deck of the ship and they'll fly you over Antarctica area and land you on the ice shelf and you can hang out there for a picnic for a day and fly you back. Uh, money is no object and the uh, adventures are no object. It's, um, it's an amazing area, <clears throat> that uh, amazing uh, changes and, and transformation. Uh, another piece of news uh, that I'll close on, the Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line Company. They own two cruise ships. One is a former uh, um, uh, one is a former Carnival ship. One is a former Costa Cruises ship. This cruise line offers cruises between Florida and the Bahamas, three day cruises. They've just announced they are eliminating their single supplements. So if you're a single traveler, you can book a cabin for yourself for the price of a single uh, for one person. You don't have to pay double to get the cabin. You can travel in a cabin on your own for your fare, your fare only. You don't have to pay double. They're the first cruise line to, to eliminate the double occupancy fee policy um, starting here. Now, this is telling me something. Between the lines, I'm trying to read here, I get the impression that since our Norwegian and now uh, Royal Caribbean are coming out with newly refurbished ships and are running three and four day cruises to the Caribbean in direct competition with these guys, Bahama Paradise. Bahama Paradise is feeling it. They're noticing their future reservation numbers are dropping. Because you have to ask yourself, if I'm on a three day cruise to the Bahamas, why wouldn't I want to go on the Royal Caribbean uh, Mariner of the Seas? It just got a $100 million upgrade with the new Wave Runner. The new rock climbing wall, the uh, virtual reality bungee jumping thing they got back there. Why wouldn't I take that ship for a three-day cruise to the Bahamas rather than take this Bahama Paradise ship? And for singles, the singles have to ask themselves, I can't get on the Mariner for cheap. I have to pay double the price. So if it's three hundred fifty bucks to be on the Mariner, I'd have to pay. I have to pay. I have to pay uh, 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 seven hundred. Because I want a cabin, I can't get a single cabin. I got to take a double. They got to. They make me pay double. Well, Bahama Paradise is thinking we'll go after the singles market first. Why don't we offer the singles market to single cruisers and at least get them on board? Because a single cruiser has the money for a booze uh, for a booze package. They have the money to gamble. They don't have kids. They don't have these obligations. They're single travelers, and so they're thinking better to have the singles than miss out on anybody. Because right now they're competing for doubles and singles with Mariner of the Seas and now the Norwegian Sun, the Norwegian Star, the Norwegian Sky. These three ships are running three and four day cruises with a mandatory drink package and a mandatory $20 a day tip included where uh, Bahamas is, is, is probably going to compete, compete with that against these guys. They have to. They have to compete. They have a ship that's 25 years old. They can't offer seven day cruises. They don't have the amenities on these ships to compete with the mega ships from everybody else. So that's what's going on, I think, here with uh, uh, Bahamas Paradise. They figured the cheapest thing for us to do right now, eliminate the signal supplement, supplement and get the signals mar singles market on our ships and corner it for the three-day run. And uh, they'll probably buy alcohol, they'll probably gamble, and, and they'll spend all kinds of money on board the ship. And at least we'll hang on to that because they're going to lose the they're going to lose the battle for the couples and the families unless they deep discount their fares, which means they lose the battle. So we'll have to see how that uh, plays itself out. Uh, back to the comments, because they have been coming in while I've been uh, 
yapping away here and just see if I can keep up with what everyone has been saying. Uh, thank you. Uh, here we go. Right. And Jordan, wow, a BD so expensive for that $1,600 rail line crew, uh, run. Uh, Cruise instead, Betsy is saying, and Jordan, Betsy, I'm sorry. Tracy Dunlap, uh, the U.S. could build lots of track and high-speed trains for $25 billion instead of a wall. Couldn't you just? Couldn't you just? Would be for the good of everybody. Put a lot of people to work, too. Paul Wilgus, agree. I and Jordan, uh, Cruise, always Betsy. Mark Lost Traveler, $1,600. You could go on back-to-back -back with that kind of money, or at least for me, with an airline discount inside cabin. Uh, Thomas Henry, maybe the train could be on top of the wall. <laughs> Richard C. Can't wait for a 10,000 passenger ship. That would be great. Paul Wilgus laughing out loud. Thomas Henry, I will say, uh, I will say what MG would, uh, too many people, uh, 10,000 people on a ship. Uh, Epic Richard uh, from Ann Jordan. MG Toe, too many crowds, weights, headaches. You come off those mega ships more stressed than when you went on. See? See? Richard was on a 4,200 passenger ship. It seemed calmer than a 2,600 passenger ship. So many things to do separating the passengers on the large ships. You know, this is something that uh, is also happening, isn't it? Ships are becoming more segregated now because of class. If you're buying the um, the Yacht Club uh, package from MSC, you're on the upper couple of decks. If you're buying the package with uh, Norwegian, the Haven, you're on three or so decks for yourself. You don't have to hang out the rest of the ship if you don't want to. And uh, now Royal Caribbean has the the, the suites. They're high, high-end suites. They will have several floors dedicated to just their their passengers. So these folks won't intermingle very much with everyone else, which means that if you're on a, a, a 5,000 passenger ship and a thousand of the passengers roughly are in the upper grade, they won't be mingling with the other four. So the 4,000 have the run of the 1,100 foot long ship and they've got 10 decks, 12 decks for themselves where the other 800 to 1,000 are on the top three or four decks and they're just up there. So yeah, if you have a shore day, People get off the ship, and you don't get off the ship. There might only be a thousand passengers left on the whole thing. Two hundred upstairs, eight hundred downstairs. You're downstairs. There's nobody there. It feels like you got the ship all to yourself. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, MG told Richard, uh, "Did it? Did it have a walk around the outside promenade deck?" Uh, he wants to know the 48 200 ship. And Jordan, I'm going on my fifth cruise with Royal Caribbean, first on the Oasis class ships. Hope all goes well. I hope so too. Peter Heckema, Richard, I agree. We were on the allure of the seas with 5,000 passengers. Didn't even notice the crowd because the ship is so darn big. There you go. And Jordan, awesome, Peter. Great pics on Facebook. Mark Lost Traveler, good day, everybody. Steak dinner time. <laughs> Have a good one, Mark. Thanks for joining me. Betsy Lane, what is the name of that cruise line? Uh, MG Toe, I would never go on a ship with 5,000 passengers. And 3,000 crew, way too many people. Peter Heckema, thanks. Ed. Thomas Henry, sounds good, Mark. Everyone's saying uh, no problems. Cool jazz. Uh, Bahama Paradise is the Walmart spinoff. Laugh out loud. Thomas Henry, I am with you, MG. Trying the bliss next year, but prefer the Jewel and Dawn class with two to five, two to 2,500 people. 2,000 to 2,500. Richard C., you wouldn't take it because you you don't want to do climbing walls and water slides. So, you know, old person maybe. Uh Whatever happened to Easy Cruise, those orange ships? Whatever happened to those guys? Uh, Thomas Henry, Bliss has a walk-around deck, though. Thomas Henry, Bruce, Star is in the Mediterranean. Oh, okay, for now, but I think they're coming back. Um, MG Toe, uh, Richard, if I want to climb walls, I go to Yosemite or a real water park. <laughs> cool, Jess. They were doing a timeshare cruise, I think, also. Uh, Richard C., they were doing, uh, let's see, uh, Tracy. Uh, Richard C., Tracy, I would rather spend it on a wall. Uh, I will save our tax dollars by not giving handouts. For the rest of the illegal people entering and more taking work positions. Okay, Richard. Uh, Peter Eckham, as soon if you book an inside cabin, you will again be known as steerage. And and this could well be what's happening as well. I, there will be a point where there will be a backlash and uh, the cruise lines will have gone too far. If Norwegian is actually thinking of doing a $25 embarkation fee, a $25 debarkation fee, I'm going to imagine it has something to do with advance, like faster, earlier, that kind of thing. Uh, that might work, uh, but if they're going to nickel and dime on reservations, that might blow back in their face big time, and the online uh, you know, backlash might force them to hold off. Uh, but if it's making the rounds right now on Cruise Critic, maybe it's uh, rumored to be coming out. Maybe it is going to happen. We'll have to see. Uh, Jim Thomas, have a good day and all. Uh, I got to head to the knee doc. See you tomorrow. Good luck, Jim, and I hope it all goes well. Uh, Richard C. Knight all. There you go. What do we got here? Uh, 67. Yeah, we're at uh, 617. We've been on long enough. Uh, 40 viewers still on the show. How many thumbs ups have I got today? 32 thumbs ups. 
three thumbs downs. Thank you for everybody giving me thumbs ups. If you can spare some, those of you who haven't given me one yet, would love to get some more thumbs ups going today. I'd love to hit 40 today and uh, get some more momentum on this uh, channel. Uh, and uh, uh, Tracy, you got to say goodbye. i got to say, good, uh, say goodbye to everyone. Going to a baseball game now in the heat. Uh, hang in there, Tracy. Beer. Remember, it's all about beer. Uh, Thomas Henry, good luck. Uh, good luck with the knee, Jim. And uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks, everybody, again, for uh, this uh, this Amazon affiliate link. Thank you, guys, for thinking about me. If you're buying something at work, you're buying something with a group uh, for yourselves, uh, if you can link to my Amazon link thing there, it'll take you to the Amazon homepage. I get a royalty on whatever you buy. It makes no difference to you guys as far as what it costs you. Thank you for everyone who's been helping uh, the channel doing that. It's fantastic. I, I, I'm, I'm really excited about the upside. July 10th, I think, is, um, is um, Prime Day for Amazon. Amazon Prime Day, July 10th. Now, it might start on the 9th, last till the 11th, but I'm crossing my fingers that a bunch of you are Prime members. <laughs> I hope you are. If you're not Prime members, you can become a Prime member for free. And if you go to my Facebook page, the Traveling with Bruce Facebook page, I posted a link into Amazon Prime for free about a week or so ago. Just scroll down, you'll find it. Link into that, sign up for nothing, and you've got an Amazon Prime membership for free right through July now to till July 20th, basically. You'll be a Prime member for Prime Day, and you get advantages of all these millions of items on a mega discount on Prime Day. Take advantage of that. I got a royalty. Everyone's happy. You don't like it after a month, just don't renew it, cancel it. It costs you nothing to be a Prime member to give it a try see how it goes anyway that's just a thought from this guy thanks again for anyone sending me uh um, um paypal donations thank you again uh, i've had a few come in including auntie jane in new zealand thank you again auntie jane love you and uh everyone else uh, uh catching traveling with bruce's store if you're picking up any swag thanks for all those orders and letting me know with photos that you got them i think it's fantastic we just put a new logo on this week check it out Dreaming of a cruise. Beautiful looking logo. I love it. Uh, there you go. I'll be on tomorrow, Thursday, two shows, five o'clock and eight o'clock tomorrow night. We got trivia tomorrow night. Get ready for trivia. Thanks again for all your support. 2,274 subscribers and counting. Fantastic. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Everyone here is saying their goodbyes. Best wishes. Uh, Let's see here. Good show. Uh, save the SS United States from MG Toe. Uh, good luck with the knee. Everyone's uh, saying to Jim. Uh, he had a knee operation last week uh, or two weeks ago. Debbie, awesome ch chat today, guys. See you tomorrow. Need to get Amazon and buy a new case for a GoPro now. Oh, my goodness. Uh, there you go. Uh, uh, bye, Debbie. Bye, and See you all later, Scott saying. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thank you for joining me today on June the 20th, 2018, Wednesday. Um, summer has begun. We're over 80 here. You guys are into the 90s and the 100s. There's no talk of snow anymore. We're getting warm. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening, everybody. I look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow. Take care for now, okay? See you soon.